Welcome to Dementia Friendly Prince George's County, Maryland Northern Sector Webinar Series for Caregivers. Today's topic is Caregiving in a Pandemic, sponsored by Prince George's County Government and the Department of Family Services. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Um, tonight, we're going to discuss um, the extra layer that the pandemic had a, has added to caregiving, we're going to look at what may have been added and also how to deal with what's been added. So I have a housekeeping thing to discuss with you first, which is um, to submit your questions in the chat if you have any. And then also to ask you if you have your raisins. I don't know if you don't have a raisin, you can get a small piece of chocolate, a cranberry, a date, apricot, um, anything that you will be able to, to do with our last activity before we close. So we're going to start first with our centering activity. And I may need this more than you, but this is something I use in my office I'm not sure of the correct name for it. I just call it my breath ball. And I do a lot with breath in my work because I think it helps to calm us down and center us a bit. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is look at the ball. And as it expands, I want you to take a deep inhale. Hold for a bit. and exhale. Inhale. Hold for a bit. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Thank you so much for doing that with me. As we get started, I would like to start with the serenity prayer. And it's used in AA a lot, and I like it because it can fit many different situations and helps us see a plan on how to deal with it. And you notice the word is accept is there to accept the things I can't change, the courage to change, change is there, I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And I find that as we're dealing with the pandemic, it is calling for acceptance, change, and also wisdom. So first we're gonna chat a little bit about the what. and acceptance. So when we think about acceptance, it's almost like plainly put, it is what it is. We are in the midst of a pandemic. Now we have to accept that changes are gonna come to our lives because of it. Sometimes I ask my clients when I'm working with them, like if you had a magic wand, what would you do to change your life? In this case, if I had a magic wand, of course, I would say pandemic be gone, but I don't. So I have to assess, you know, accept the fact that it does exist and I can't control it. But with acceptance, it also can bring the realization that I may not be able to control the pandemic amongst other things in my life at times, but I can control my reaction to it. So starting off knowing the baseline from which we operate our lives ordinarily, although that baseline for many of you may have already changed when you shifted to the role of caretaker, looking at the baseline can give us 
you know, the changes that we that are coming. We get into assessment mode and then we can see the necessary things that we may need to shift because the pandemic had, has added to our existing roles. In the beginning, what we may need to do is check on our wants and needs. What's important to us? Also, not just our wants and needs, but the wants and needs of the person that we are caring for. We may have to look into checking our feelings. Research is reporting now that there is a spike in anxiety and depression levels. A lot of it they're saying is the culprit of the pandemic because of the isolation that it has wrought and many people feel. So we may have to ask ourselves the question is, hmm, how am I? Am I a social person? If I am a social person, how do I get in that socialization during the pandemic? What do I need to do to adjust so that I can have those needs met while dealing with the pandemic? Another thing other than just feelings in a situation, we may want to think about what are we thinking? Are we using our emotional minds or our wise minds? Sometimes it's not the experience that we're having in life, but the thoughts we attach to the experiences that can create more stress or more drama or problems in our life. There was a list that I have that some I also go over with my clients, and it's it's about eight limited thinking patterns. Of course, I won't bore you with all eight. I'll just maybe pick up three of them. One of them is mind reading. Without someone saying so, you know that the person, what the person is feeling and why they act the way they do. In particular, you have certain knowledge of how people think and feel. Shoulds. You have a list in your mind of ironclad rules about how you and other people should act. People who break those rules anger you and you feel guilty when you violate the rules. Sometimes filtering, you focus on the negative details while ignoring the positive aspects of the situation. So, there is a limiting thoughts and then we have to figure out if the thoughts or patterns that we may fall into sometimes lend to our being accepting of change or they create barriers for change as we move forward we're going to of course know that the what's that i just went through are very generalized and every situation probably has more specific ones depending on individual circumstances and situations. We want to move into the hows. We've discussed some what's, and the role of the hows kind of revolves around how we manage. And it starts with awareness. The pandemic is definitely here. So what are some of the precautions that people have asked us to take? Wearing a mask, social distancing, washing our hands for 20 seconds. So we know these things are there and set in place as precautions. Then we have to take action on those. We have to implement those and make them part of our daily routines. How does it affect the person that you're caring for? How are you getting this point across to them depending on what stage they are in? Awareness also comes from observing. But when we observe, and I 
notice there's a misspelling there, but that was supposed to be judgment. So um, observing without judgment or criticism of ourself or others is also important in getting to the awareness level of what is going on. Awareness allows us to check the energy level. If everything is energy, what signals are we sending? Are we zappers or vipers of energy? Are we sucking energy? Or are we uplifting and adding energy? So it's good to be aware so we can manage our needs and our wants and the wants and needs of others. Being aware helps us also build tolerance and put skills in place into our toolbox that help us basically handle things as they pop up. It helps us develop coping skills to help us deal with what may come along and be thrown our way. There's a practice called staying in the present, dealing with the here and now, the power being in the now, in the present, taking one day at a time, not reaching back into the past where a lot of times we pull in our mistakes, our guilt or our unforgiveness from the past into our present and also not jumping too far into the future where usually they say worry and fear lie, but dealing with being in the present, being in the here and now. It's good to plan, but making plans that aren't so rigid. If this doesn't get done by two o'clock on Tuesday, then I have heightened anxiety. So you're building, you're planning, but you're doing that with flexibility. So being that if something happens, then I'm not gonna get so upset about it that I spill over into being anxious or falling into a depression. Keeping a positive attitude, building positive experiences. How do I do that? Usually, one, there's several ways that you can build positive experiences. So it's almost like watering what you would want to happen in your life, planting seeds of gratitude and acceptance. Um, sometimes making a gratitude journal, like writing down certain things, maybe three things before you go to sleep that you're grateful for in that day it can be very small but at least helps you think about the things that are going right in your life and not the things that may be going not the way you want them to go. Looking at things that are presented to us as opportunities to try something new or opportunities to, to learn. So reframing things that we may call challenges into opportunities. Being able to monitor ourselves, knowing our triggers, what reactions we may have. If we know our triggers, then we can work on our reaction. A lot of times too, a positive attitude can be uplifted with affirmations, affirming yourself and others, affirming things in your life. Also, denials may have to come in that but reframing the denials in a positive way. Like for instance, you can say a denial of something that you don't want in your life by saying I'm free from, rather than I don't want this or I'm not gonna do this. I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I had an addiction for McDonald's fries and I was trying to not eat them every day or three or four times a week because my cholesterol level was kind of getting elevated. And so I would say, I'm not going to have fries today. I'm not going to have fries today. And then I would find myself in the line at McDonald's getting fries. So I had to practice a new thing. And that was basically saying I'm free from 
going to McDonald's for the fries because I think I confused the universe when I told them I wasn't going to get it. The universe just heard fries and it tried to give me what I wanted. Focusing is important too. Trying to focus on things and not trying to multitask too much and taking ourselves into the realm of being overwhelmed with what we do. Even the simplest task of brushing our teeth. Um, sometimes we find ourselves doing brushing our teeth, but thinking about what we should have done before we started brushing or what we're going to do after we brush. Eating a meal. Sometimes we're eating and we're hurrying through the eating process and not taking the time to even enjoy that moment. If we're taking a walk, just noticing things around us, taking a mindful walk, paying attention to nature, paying attention maybe to the sky, or if you see a bird or a squirrel, but just being mindful and focused on the task at hand so we don't tire ourselves out and stress ourselves out by trying to do too much at once. Next, we go into self-care, which is important in just everything we do. The first thing I have here on self-care has to do with the basics. And one of the basics I would say for me is Knowing my learning style before I even start to do any of these other things. Am I uh, an auditory learner? Do I do better with learning or caring if I hear something? Or am I a visual learner? Do I need to see something in order for it to make sense for me? Or am I kinesthetic? Do I have to manipulate it in order for me? to be able to um, put it as part of my toolkit. So I'm a combination learner. I need to hear it and also see it. So that's possible to be more than one at a time as well. Relaxation falls under that, but the basics come with, are you eating properly? Are you eating at the correct times? Are you trying to eat before it's time to go to bed? Are we eating too late? Um, are we exercising? Are we sleeping okay? Are we practicing sleep hygiene? Do we have a schedule? Do we stay on electronics too late so it makes it hard for us to sleep. So there's a lot in self-care, there's a lot of self-examination that goes on as well. And self-talk, what do we say to ourselves? Do we say things that uplifting to us or we, do we say things to ourselves that are depleting? If we get into a state of feeling stressed or low or angry, do we say things to ourselves that escalates us or do we say things to ourselves that de-escalates us? For instance, let's look at a couple of things that would be negative self-talk and then see what the reframing could be. Like for instance, I'll never get finished. What's the way that we could say that to ourselves in a better way? Maybe we could say, just take it one step at a time. Negative, why am I so anxious? I hate feeling like this. I know I'm gonna do a lousy job. Changing it, reframing it. I will do well on this test because I know I can handle this stuff. Negative, why should I, what should I do now? I don't know this answer, but it'll take time to figure out. I might not finish. I may lose 
an idea or somebody, nobody will listen to me. Maybe I need to skip this and go back to it. Some people even say they hate themselves. That self-talk would be very defeating. Why not say, I'm getting stressed, but I am okay and I can handle it. Definitely how we talk to ourselves is very, very key. Developing coping statements is also another way that we can work with self-talk. Depending on what's going on in our life, we could always come up with a statement. There's a bank of statements sometimes that are even there available for you to use until you come up with your own. Like for instance, this isn't the worst thing that could happen. I can handle this. I, this feeling is uncomfortable but I will accept it and move through it. I've survived before and I will survive this time as well. Nothing serious is going to happen to me. These are just thoughts, not reality. And of course, one of my favorite ones is the breath. The breath can do numerous things and it doesn't cost anything. We just have it here at, at hand for us. I'm gonna do a little breath exercise with you. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna get you to put your right hand on your abdomen and your left hand up here on your chest. Now this is gonna be called conscious breathing. You can practice it to set your intentions. You can practice it maybe to relax. Maybe if you can't go to sleep, there's different ways to use this if you get upset or feeling stressed, but it's a different way of breathing. What you're gonna do is when you take your breath in, your inhale, your, your abdomen's gonna poke out. So you actually are filling up like a balloon from the bottom instead of the top down. And then you're going to take a breath in, expanding your abdomen, hold it for a bit. And when you release it and you exhale, just let it go and try to push your abdomen back to your back. Exhale. And again, filling up like a balloon, hold and release. One more time. Hold and release. This helps quiet the brain a little bit. When we breathe regularly, thoughts that are overwhelming us or taking us on different trips that we might not want it to go, they just keep coming, coming, coming. But if we can go and call in the breath, sometimes it gives us a chance to not feel overwhelmed. Now the thoughts may come back, you don't push them away, but you just breathe through them. After you practice that for a while, you won't have to put your hands in that place. You'll just be able to do it automatically anywhere you are. Nobody will know that you're doing it. You're not hyperventilating, you're just breathing. Last thing I'd like to talk about is self-soothing -sooth behaviors. Knowing yourself and knowing what soothes you, what takes you to a place of relaxation. Um, there's things called body scans on which you can just scan your body and send your breath to an area where you're feeling uncomfortable. There's progressive muscle relaxation where you start from the bottom and you tighten up at your toe level, your feet, and then you release. You take attention to each part of your body and move all the way up your body. Tension, and release. 
and that can bring or promote relaxation for the whole body. Sometimes taking a hot shower, taking a bubble bath, aromatherapy sometimes works for this purpose. Lavender is a very, very calming scent that you can use and it helps you to relax. So now I'm going to do talk about one more exercise that I had seen practiced in a mindfulness place. It has to do with appreciation and it has to do with making connection just with your fingers, looking at your hands and then picking small things that you appreciate and put it, saying them for each finger. So it's like a 10 count appreciation exercise. And after you've done that on your fingers, you will notice that it has calmed you down and brought you into the present. Another way to approach this is to draw your hands on paper. And after you've drawn your hands on paper, if you're a visual learner, you can write in your fingers things you appreciate. You can write affirmations in there. And then you have the vis visual representation of it on the paper where you can hang it up and look at it to remind yourself or just to look at your hands and remind yourself. And this can take you into a practice of being there and being for yourself. So now I'm gonna ask you if you could go find or grab your raisin, have it close by or your piece of candy or just something small as we go through our last exercise, which is meant to basically help us focus, to help us be in the here and now, to help give us some area to just relax the brain and the body in a, a bit. And so this is a mindfulness exercise as well, and it's called the Raisin Meditation. And there are many ways to meditate. I know some people say, um, that's not my religion, but meditation is not a religion. It's just breathing and centering yourself. So what I want you to think about here is being able to set aside five to 10 minutes when you can be alone in a place and at a time when you will not be disturbed by the phone, family, or friends. Switch off your cell phone so it doesn't play on your mind. You will need a few raisins or other dried fruit or even nuts. You can do this with small nuts. You'll also need a piece of paper or a pen so you can record your reactions afterward. You don't need that now. We're just gonna walk through the process. Your task is going to be to eat the fruit or nuts in a mindful way. And you can do that with chocolate candy as well. Um, so I'm going to take you through this so you won't need to. Um, so this is the instructions. Take the raisin or nuts or dried fruit, hold it in the palm of your hand or between your fingers and your thumb. Focusing on it, approach it as if you've never seen anything like this before. So you're kind of observing and examining. Hmm, do you feel the weight on your hand? If you have it in your palm, is it casting a shadow in your palm? Seeing. Take the time to really see the raisin. 
Imagine you have never seen a raisin before. Look at it with care. Place your full attention on it. Let your eyes explore it. Examine the highlights, the ridges, the hollows, the folds. You're just holding that raisin and becoming one with it, so to speak. Now, Turn the raisin over between your fingers, feeling the texture. How does it feel between your forefinger and your thumb? Switch it to your other hand. Pass it back and forth between your hands, observing it as it goes. Now hold it up under your nose. See what you notice with each breath. Does it have a scent? Become aware of the scent. If there is no scent or very little scent, notice that as well. Slowly now, you're going to put whatever you have in your mouth. Notice how your hand and your arm had to raise to get it to your mouth. Place it in your mouth. Noticing how the tongue receives it. Don't chew without chewing. Simply explore the sensations you're having on your tongue. Just gradually explore the object with your tongue for as long as you choose. When you're ready, go ahead and just consciously bite the raisin and notice the effects on the raisin and on your mouth. Notice any taste that it releases. Feel the texture as your teeth bite into it. Continue chewing slowly, but don't swallow just yet. Just notice what's happening in your mouth. Think about it. Are you having the attention to swallow? Does that come in your mind after you're chewing it? When you're ready, go ahead and actually swallow. Notice what the tongue does as it prepares to swallow. Now just take time to reflect on that experience. That meditation was mainly for getting us to be in the moment, to focus. Things that we have eaten before, but just maybe just put in our mouth and swallowed without looking at it or smelling it or even tasting it. How many times do we rush through our meals without really enjoying the flavor of the food that we're eating? Because we are thinking about what we need to do next or what we miss doing. So trying to greet each day with setting your intentions, being present for what you are doing at that moment and making sure that you take time to deal with self-care is going to be very important. As we go through the pandemic 
and as you continue to care for yourself and others.